this game called Thimbleweed Park. If you think this is a game about figuring out who killed the stiff out by the bridge, you're wrong! That rotting corpse is the least of your problems in a town like this. The town is run by a rich, narcissistic egomaniac who's obsessed with artificial intelligence built from vacuum tubes. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Before I was cursed by this old lady, I was rich, famous, and at the top of my game, doing sellout shows every night. Now I'm reduced to breaking into a burnt-out pillow factory to steal back the plans for my comeback doll. Oh yeah, and these morons are also gonna help. Man, Thimbleweed Park. Get to hell. Alright, well, welcome to this uh, quick intro video on uh, some of the new things in PD Artist. Uh, this one's kind of uh, aiming uh, to explain a few things uh, to the total novice who has never seen PD Artist uh, or Project Dog Waffle for that matter. Uh, Project Dog Waffle uh, comes in several versions and flavors, and there is an artist edition as much also as a howler edition. And uh, the howler edition is the one that's more complete and has everything. So, <coughs> what you can do is you can look at that. The documentation on that one to uh, to see what was new in earlier version or what's new in version 9.6, particularly 9.5, and then also before that 9.2, where there was an artist edition. Last time it was 9.2, um, <coughs> but you simply need to ignore the animation and uh, uh, you know video tools. Uh, but still, you can do things like these and create beautiful animated scenes. Um, <coughs> this one here is a slideshow with a little bit of music by uh, Jose Luis Suazo. Um, and uh, you know, still images like these can definitely be composited or created. The background image also, in particular, uh, with the 3D designer. And so one thing I wanted to show you is just how to get started doing that. Because, <coughs> let's face it, PD Artist is primarily a paint program, but with a twist. It has uh, a number of things. It has, of course, a, a number of predefined brushes. Uh, you can see that here on the large airbrush. You can also click on the brush tool, and it might appear as a single uh, colon with the uh, additional colors and other tools here on the right side. Uh, it's called the sidebar. Uh, you can arrange that and I highly recommend that you go to the layout under the window menu and uh, change your sidebar to your liking. Make it go to the right, to the left, uh, have the, the toolbar here floating or two column, one column, all sorts of different uh, choices in color styles as well, color uh, patterns. <coughs> or, or themes rather and uh, once you have your layout you like you can right click on many of these tools such as the the brush here that gives you the same menu for predefined brushes uh, as this one 
But there's also another thing here called the Browse Media, and with the Media Browser you can collect your own additional brushes and also find shortcuts to a variety of others. And so we have uh, stickers, uh, some 3D brushes here that are uh, collections of uh, vinyl sticker images created by a French artist who's uh, gently uh, nicely donated those to us uh, to include with the program. Uh, there are lots of uh, <coughs> different types of uh, uh, graphic effects, modeling clay for instance, or, or smearing effects. Uh, and then of course more advanced brushes, um, particle brushes up here, uh, which you can also access uh, through a couple of these uh, shortcuts here, particles, bristle brushes, and so on. So the particle brushes, if you pin this down, uh, you'll see that you can uh, use that to enable regular particle brushes, and that's great for fireworks and all sorts of different effects. There's a number of predefines you can load, uh, such as body grass, and so, for instance, if you erase the background here and create some sort of uh, initial sky, render that something like this. Uh, <coughs> you have that initial render, then you use your particle brush to quickly create some grass in the foreground. And you see how quickly you can create some nice displays like that. Um, you can also go to the bristle mode, switch to that. And with the bristle mode, you have uh, perhaps a very different experience with brushes some pretty fine styles here. Uh, there's also orbital brushes, and orbital brushes are kind of orbiting in 3D around your cursor. Kind of a, a hive of, uh, a flock of uh, birds, a flock of bees, uh, a beehive that's tracking you and following your cursor, and uh, you can uh, enable an elastic spring with that, so it kind of flies around. Let's go erase this and see that. So all sorts of different effects, and then the foliage brushes, uh, with the uh, load which draws a full tree uh, and that in fact also does um, all sorts of visual effects on that so it draws the tree you have it subject to mouse movement and uh, speed and other things you can enable or disable the shading uh, it's still doing the self shading too you see the ambient occlusion is calculated here in a post process and within uh, less than a second you see a, a more depth looking or uh, you know 3d looking uh, tree set uh, and that's a great tool to combine together with all sorts of other uh, effects too so for instance here you could uh, create some sort of foreground trees um, or branches and then we, we can go back to the particles uh, let's say the grass and uh, this time I'm gonna use uh, something like winter branches at the bottom here there's a few more and then I'm going to go back to loading my grass. There's a couple of different styles. I like the baddy grass. Let's grab this one here. And so it looks like we're at the abyss here or at the, on the edge of a beautiful scenery. The thing we need to do is define that scenery. So let's get uh, started on that. Let's go store this image. We might get back to that later. It's a good thing to store things as they become available or as they are done. Let me disable the brush here. And I'm going to go and create a starting point for my... Um, for my uh, sort of a, land, a landscape in the background. And this is inspired by a number of tutorials we have called the River Canyons. So I'm going to right click on this tool here where you have some gradient tools, the linear gradient in particular. I'm going to go with something like this or perhaps uh, grab the regular uh, gradients down here. Uh, something like it's just a plain white, black to white that is. All right, so <laughs> let's go with something like this and then go to another filter which is <laughs> the render plasma noise. And in the render plasma noise, you can actually you could use just that as your elevation map. But having that that uh, gradient before, and then using this one in difference mode, you get a little bit of a carved canyon going along that. Especially if you adjust and click a few times the scale here until you find a nice uh, looking canyon going through that. <coughs> Purely uh, randomized and uh, uh, case of good luck there until you find one you like. So you have a river going through here and some high mountain peaks. Let's grab that, uh, OK that, store this, because that's an interesting step to remember and get back to if necessary. And then let's go to the magic of what this tutorial is all about, and that's to create, uh, a use a 3D designer to create this as a landscape. Right, in version 9.2, we already introduced the Puppy Ray Ray Tracer, which can take this as an elevation map as well. The 3D designer was there before as well, but uh, it has evolved a lot in this version, so I wanted to show you that a little bit. Uh, in fact, let me go cancel this out a little bit, move it down, scale it a little bit to move it to the left. So we just have a little bit better view of everything, even with the other 
interface coming up here. So transform, 3D designer, there it is. It remembers the most recent settings. So we have the amplitude up here that takes the elevation map and you can show the elevation map rather than the object color. You can show what the elevation map looks like. All right, there it is. That's the, the image we just had and we still see it down here. So this image is serving as elevation map and we can modulate the amplitude right there. But there's a lot more we can do with that to give it more visual uh, realism or uh, interesting look. Uh, one of them is uh, we'll want to add a little bit of ray trace shadows. So there's a ray trace for this light source. There's two light sources. There's this one here and the second one down here. Uh, the one up here will have an option for ray tracing, let's say soft shadows. And uh, we can uh, adjust the altitude, the azimuth. We can rotate this thing around. Let's say we have it in the upper left corner there and the zenith far away, so we need to increase the light range, the intensity a little bit. Uh, perhaps something like that. And, and then we may want to also increase the light from this light source. This one I'm going to go all the way up, all the way down. Uh, actually it doesn't matter for the zenith all the way in the center. Uh, but then we have sort of a top-down light that shines from the top uh, onto the scene. And that means basically a skylight, so we need to change the background color to kind of go in sync with that. If we want the light to be kind of bluish, we should see the background kind of bluish. Uh, if you're on Mars or some other strange planet, if the, the backlight is more of a reddish tint, something like this, uh, then you probably will want to have uh, a background color also that is, uh, you know, some sort of a dusty uh, sandstorm appearance, something like that. And so the two things kind of come uh, hand in hand and go together pretty well. Uh, so one thing we'll do is um, work a little bit more on that visual realism and one thing obviously we want to do is add some erosion to that. So um, let's say we will probably have a bit of erosion that we want to see. Now here in the foreground this mountain is going to be in our way. Uh, we can't really see much here if we tilt it to the side. So it'd be nice to flatten this one down a little bit. So I'm going to cancel out of this and use a brush here to just bring this down a little bit. Use a large airbrush and uh, perhaps very low opacity so it doesn't do too much damage but you can see how you can you can use that to kind of lower this to a, a very plateau look there so to speak uh, perhaps that's a little bit too much so let me let me go undo that and just do a little bit like this and then fade it also with the fade last action so you have just a little bit of reduction in brightness and intensity. That might help. That might just bring it down low enough that we don't see too much uh, of these mountains cover the ones in the background there. All right, so let's go back into the 3D designer. There it is. And so now we do have indeed these mountains here a little bit closer. And we're ready to uh, apply that erosion. So <coughs> what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to uh, enable the more, click the more button here. You'll see uh, that gives you additional more options on the uh, 3D designer interface and one thing we'll do is we'll use the erosion right here so let's give it a second or two give it time to er uh, erode it and now you see that it's applied the erosion all over there uh, you can zoom into that to see a little bit more I mean move the camera position into this or move the object closer to you uh, now it has a very dry rock sand rocky look uh, it would be nice to have some sediments too so we can add those sediments right here and uh, have them appear in a s uh, color that is kind of uh, tantamount to the elevation. And if you want, you can instead give it a color that is uh, perhaps a different uh, uh, combination of colors with grass, rock, and snow. Now, before you do that, you might want to store this one. So let's go store the texture, and you'll have a snapshot there, uh, or so I think. It's a little bit covered here, but that's okay. Uh, we can store all sorts of other parameters here. Let's go and uh, apply. Oh, we didn't have the texture. The texture is actually in the swap image. Right now, they're on plain white. So what we need to do is really create the texture. And uh, that one is the one that I was referring to a little bit earlier, where you can have the snow level go down. You can have the rocks in the middle and then the grass down in the bottom of the valley. So one thing you can also do is say, let's put some sediments there for the snow to fill this all up, right? If this is like deep winter, uh, you might not see much of that grass. Um, so there's a little bit of that. Uh, you can change the smoothing there. Uh, you can change the intensity. Uh, all sorts of uh, effects you can get from that. You can uh, change, instead of grass, you might want to go back to that theme with the red rock uh, coloration. Uh, and again, the, the smoothing, maybe you want to increase that so it kind of blurs or blends a little bit better there. Let's give it even 44. 
There you go. So you have that, that reddish color blend and mix uh, gradually into the dark gray rock. Um, let's see. Some other things we can do is, uh, like I said, adjust how much uh, erosion we get, uh, how much the sediments are filling these erosion up, um, all sorts of different things here. Um, we can also add um, some some fog level here in the distance. Uh, perhaps change the camera zoom here and move this uh, back a little bit. And look at how different this now is from what we started, right? I mean, initially we had just some sort of an elevation map, but look at that. This one already changes now. And um, probably we will want to add a little bit of ground fog there too. Let's give it the nonlinear ground fog. There you go. Uh, let's also go to the cloud system and add some puffy clouds. Now, in, in the Howler edition, you can actually create these clouds yourself. Uh, there is a particle modeler that's in the animated category of the filters. But uh, in um, PD Artist, uh, you don't have the animation capability. So it's, uh, it's, uh, but, but it still has those predefined uh, clouds. So it's, it's nice. You can still put those in uh, if you so desire. Um, you can also, let's say, move this thing down back a little bit to the background there. And perhaps a little bit more to the left. There you go. And also a little bit down. Something like that. And uh, then it's probably time to increase the fog just a tad bit. Or not. I mean, you know, depending on how much you want to make this look like it's a really foggy planet or hazy sandstorm conditions prevailing even though it's a kind of a snowy uh, landscape right now. Uh, you can also increase the specular highlights there, uh, reduce the intensity of the regular diffuse. So all sorts of really interesting things to make this landscape come to life and at some point, um, well, it's time to render that. So when it's time to render, uh, what I would do is, uh, if you have time, give it the anti-aliasing at the highest level 5. Uh, you can change the pre-filter here to make it a little bit more rugged in appearance or a little bit uh, smoother at 100%, uh, kind of rounded corners. Um, there is also the anti-aliasing here if you're in a hurry uh, or you don't need it the very best. You know, you do a test render with anti-aliasing off. But if you click and drag this thing here, you can drag it all the way to 5 for the best level anti-aliasing. And uh, that's perhaps a place where you also might want to now store this texture. And there you see it's stored. You can store other things here. Uh, the erosion map. You can store the erosion map. Some programs will benefit from having that available. Store the lighting. There's, there's two maps for that. And the masks, which indicate where is the grass level, where is the snow level, and where is the rock. So this, these are masks that can be useful if you want to further paint the very details of uh, the textures that you see here in a very summary way. All right, so I'm going to render that. Uh, click on OK. And that will take a few seconds, uh, you know, it will take a few, it, it really depends on, on how, uh, how much uh, performance you have on your graphics uh, card, on your GPU, and also on your CPU. Um, what we'll do next, perhaps, is say, well, that was nice, but let's, un let's store this image. It's a candidate, it's not the best, perhaps, yet, so let's go undo that. Let's go back into the 3D designer. There it is. And it uh, uses the same parameters as we just had. We see back here there's a little bit of a glitch. We see the edge of that. We may need to scale this up, scale it sideways. There you go. Uh, might need to move it a little bit sideways if you want to see a bit more on this. Might want to rotate it, change the heading. Um, let's see what else could we do here to uh, frame it a little bit more. Something like that. Move it like this. Um, perhaps get rid of that depth. There you go. Uh, reduce the light range. And then there is one more thing. If it gets too dark here, you can enable ambient occlusion uh, in multiplicative mode and then increase the bright the light. Or you can um, enable it in additive mode. And either way, you'll see that it will reveal more details. The dark areas, the bright areas, they're a little bit higher contrast. Let me show you that one more time. If I uncheck the ambient occlusion, uh, you see this appearance. If you enable ambient occlusion, you'll see a slightly different appearance there with uh, perhaps a bit more detail revealed in the dark areas. And of course it really helps <coughs> with the graininess that you see here. It, gr it helps if you have uh, the anti-aliasing at the maximum. That will uh, pretty much get rid of that and give you the best possible appearance on that uh, render. 
So let's see perhaps one more. I'm going to go <coughs> to a camera zoom that's almost gone. Reduce the fog so we actually get to see this. And uh, zoom in. Uh, turn around a little bit. Something like this. I think we're getting close and then you know the thing is um, you don't necessarily render the final pose right here either uh, it's okay if you if you have some edges here and you just crop that off or you mask it with mountains or with the grass we had in the outer scene before right so let's go something like that in fact let's do just one more adjustment on the light source you might want to have the Sun appearing over here so I'm gonna bring it down low and um, yeah something like that that's cool <coughs> and so at that point we have the render that I need. We'll probably put a post uh, lens flare, a post work right here. Let's go store this image. And uh, one more thing we want to do, of course, is put this image here in the background, in the foreground now. Now that one uh, has a white background. We could perhaps make that transparent. Right, so let's go and, uh, for instance, uh, se make a selection, selection mask by the color. Right, and select the white color. Uh, so it selects everything that's white. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we have primary focus there on the background that's in there. Uh, and then we can go and perhaps uh, adjust or invert that selection. So we actually invert it and now we have the grass and the trees selected. And then at that point, we can go and pick that up as a custom brush um, <coughs> and composite that uh, or paint it on top of this one here, right? Or this one, uh, this one here, I think. Um, so see is that the one yep <coughs> and so what I'll do is I'll simply enable the brush uh, to bring it here in for full full opacity now there it is <coughs> and uh, this one's of course uh, in need of a little bit more um, work we can uh, focus on that in a different tutorial because I have the edges showing the white edges so maybe transparency or uh, pre multiply correction here we can say we had some white color let's go and correct that it's a little bit better it's still not perfect but uh, we know where to take this uh, you know we could go and for instance paint that like that stamp it on or even better really uh, just redo that All right so let's go and select this uh, brush again the particles and go <coughs> over here to enable <coughs> the foliage and uh, same foliage as we had before I suppose yep there it is and something like this will do just perfect and then we can go to the other one, which is the particles for the grass. And that one probably still has the grass. Yeah, it's a different uh, color map, though, different gradient now. So we may need to choose a different one here again, or just load it again and <coughs> have this go in like that. And so there we are. Now we are ready to add our lens flares. Uh, let's go disable the preview on the brush. Uh, let's go and put that in the center and uh, minimize all these guys. Okay, and uh, oh, we have a number of resources that we stored. <coughs> They're all here. Let's go minimize them. Uh, and then, so at this point, the final touch will be perhaps to add a little bit of uh, contrast, expand dynamic range, all sorts of things we can do here with the photographic filters for soft, um, soft shadow, soft enhancement, soft contrast improvement. Uh, and of course, right click on the gradient tool here to get the lens flares and the lens flares dialog uh, will use that to put the sun right around here perhaps another one right on top perhaps yet another one I created one uh, oh now I was in the other program in, in Howler um, <coughs> we'll, we'll just put that there and you know if it's, if it's too much we can undo that and just try a different color this one's uh, a bit more of a bluish this one's a little bit more yellowish there you go I like that alright well thanks for watching and welcome to PD Artist. <laughs>